so it is Star Wars season. We've got the Mandalorian. We've got Fallen Order. We've got Episode Nine coming out next month. And of course, I am a Star Wars nerd, and uh, I hope you are as well. Um, so I, for a couple of weeks, I've been wanting to make some lightsaber renders, and what do you know? I made some. I like them. They came out cool. Made a little tutorial on them. I recorded it super late because I'm a fanny. I used as much free assets as I could. The project file will be on myself for free in the description. So for even the assets that I did use uh, textures wise, you can go and get them. The original project file will be there and the tutorial one. Without further ado, I'm not going to hang about. I'm going to let you go and listen to me half asleep making some lightsaber renders. So enjoy and I'll see you next Friday. I did use Grayscale Gorilla's lightsaber model that Chris did years and years ago. It's always been a trustworthy model. I've used it quite a few times and that's completely free. So what we'll do is we'll start by opening that model. And of course, we are using Octane Render for this. So we will do some retexturing and whatnot. Now for the ground plane, I am going to use one of my noise terrains I made uh, a, a couple of tutorials ago. So you can buy those project files or you can go watch that tutorial to get learn how to make you know that noise terrain and then uh, come and uh, come back to this. Uh, we're not really going over much today, just I kind of just want to run through uh, how I did the render because there's a few tricks here then, uh, here or there, which I think are quite useful. So of course we'll just go into path tracing, we'll set this to 512 and we'll go 8, 8 and 10 down here. Usually I like to leave things like that. I'm going to try and make today's tutorial a bit quicker, a bit faster. Um, I liked last week's tutorial but it felt a bit slow uh, and uh, I feel like... Uh, there might be some people that appreciate this more, especially for YouTube's platform. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is there was a few tricks I did. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename. Well, I'll drop this in, and I'll call that malware. So just replace that, and then do the same here. Call it gold. Do the same with this one. Call it gold two, and then. We will come back in a bit, but I'm just going to oh, set them uh, kind of as a fake color right now. And then uh, we'll come back in a bit and get a proper gold through the IOR. Just so I know that those are the gold uh, on here when we're lighting it. Um, and for now, we can just turn off the blade, but we will just replace that as well. If you're wondering how I'm doing that, if you don't know, drop it in material, hold it, press Alt. And it will come up with a square above it, and you can just replace the material. Um, so that's useful for uh, when you're trying to replace materials, because sometimes if you select them all and you go materials and uh, convert materials, uh, it doesn't really work that well, and it kind of messes them up. And you've got to go into the material and change a bunch of things. So it's actually quicker to just come here and uh, drag them over like that. But first things first, uh, we'll drop in a plane here. Um, now I assume you're going to be using the same lightsaber, if you're not, then uh, there'll be a few things you're going to have to change up. But, uh, if we're using the same lightsaber, you can follow along pretty easily. So point two, point two, point two. The lightsaber uh, is very big in this scene, and I don't want a lightsaber that big. Um, so, in fact, I'm actually going to go point one, point one, point one. No. Point... So the five. Okay, I kind of like the look at this scale. So next, I'm just going to drop in the HDRI. So I've just got this. Uh, I'm going to use the same HDRI I used in the original render, and it's just a Car Studio, I think, uh, something like that. I'm going to drop it way down. Now the lighting is, as usual, kind of was going to make this scene. What I actually uh, want to do is show you a very fun trick here when it comes to lighting. I'm going to add a Octane Camera Tag here as well. Um, so if you actually go to Window and come to New View Panel, there's a little trick for you, and then drag that up. Now, while we're lighting our scene, we can move around while the live viewer stays on that camera. And crikey, does it make your life easier? 
So we'll just sort out all the lights here. Of course, I've managed to turn that the wrong way around. Now, Andre Libros made a very cool tutorial uh, a couple months ago on lighting and uh, three point lighting systems. And if you haven't seen that, I would suggest checking that out because I'm kind of going to do something similar today. If you have any basic understanding of lighting, then you'll probably already know what I'm going to do. Um, but lighting on a whole is a lot easier when you understand it. Because when you're moving around lights, trying to get you know this result or that result, uh, when you're not really understanding what's going on, uh, it, can, it can be a bit difficult. Uh, so this will be our fill light here. I'll just drag this up around there. Kind of want to just get that highlight along it there. And then drop in another light. Bring it down. Bring it up. And plug in Super D Octane, fall off map. Thousand. That lighting should be okay for now. Uh, we shouldn't have to mess with that too much. Uh, in the camera, I am gonna. So this is already set to eighty. I'm gonna go to hundred. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load in one of those noise rings I spoke about. Uh, I'm just gonna add a bit of bloom here because. Yeah. Cool. So I will load that in then quickly. So if you've bought the project file, you'll be familiar with this. Now the one I used on the tutorial on the on the original scene earlier was uh in in Nutus, Nutus, however you pronounce this. I'm just gonna use the same one again. Okay, so I'm just gonna take out a plane here and load in the noise. That looks a bit funny right now. Um, so we'll tackle that in a few minutes. Uh, but here is a little trick. I know this might be a bit unconditional to some of you. Uh, but I do have a little trick here, so I'm going to bring the saber up and I'm going to bring the camera all the way up here and just going to get, I'm going to try and recreate the scene quite closely. Now what I'm actually going to do next is I'm going to take the plane and I'm going to tilt it like this, just like that. And then I'm going to take the saber again and I'm going to tilt that. I don't know, this is one of Sketchy's really weird tricks that he always does, but uh, maybe bring that up a bit. And then in the lighting, make sure that our HDRI isn't causing any issues. Settle them to 100. Uh, now, 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 now. These cameras are a bit messed up. I'm going to increase the roughness a bit on the light saber so this light stops tripping with it as much. But apparently, that light is completely blowing out. So, what we'll do is take our fill light here. I move it back so it acts as more of a fill light. Uh, and in our main key light here, we'll just concentrate that a bit more on the saber. And then that should be looking a bit better now, yeah. Uh, now, because these cameras are from the other scene, they're all set up to that scene, so I do just have to kind of toy with them a bit. Um, which probably isn't the best idea, uh, but whatever. Uh, I'm going to keep tilting the plane here, uh, and that's kind of as close as I can get. I know it's a bit of a weird way of doing things, but I don't really fancy explaining how it works. Uh, I just know it works. Uh, I use it quite a lot on my scenes. I kind of tilt perspectives, and you wouldn't really know that I've done it. Uh, but hey ho, I'd manage it. Uh, so we're gonna load in the blade now. Now here's a funny trick. Um, shall I make it? I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. It's gonna be canon, right? But maybe I'll do a different color. I'll do green. I'll just. 
I'll stake out it. Okay, so if we plug in the black body emission here, and I should be much stronger than it's appearing right now. It's usually the other way around. But what we're going to do is we're going to take an RGB spec. Now, you can plug that into the texture. Now, well, that's what the power is that we're going to RGB. So, if we're going for green, right, typically you would think that we're going this really hardcore green. As you can see, there's a lot of issues here um, with the way that emits. Now, if you actually look, especially in the newer movies, the way the lightsabers um, emit their light is it's not actually that solid of a colour. Is It's actually um, much closer to white than it is to green. So if you come around 37%, you actually get much more, well, maybe around 40%, maybe bring that down a bit. Okay, so that'll do. You actually get a much, much more realistic representation of what the saber uh, is like. They're because they're so bright in the middle, they emit quite a lot of white light, and then it's kind of the the hue that's coming off of that light and reflecting on the surfaces that is of color. And I think that's probably a good thing to pay attention to, as opposed to uh, just focusing on the fact that yeah, it's green. Let me make it green. Uh, so from there. Uh, I'm just going to grab this camera and come around here. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Okay, now next we're going to get into the texturing. I didn't do anything too special, um, but I will stay in these two cameras here for it. Um, so I just want to say you could do some really interesting things with this. Uh, so if this sets up your next little trailer, or whatever fun thing you're doing, I don't know. Uh, I hope that uh, you have a lot of fun with it. Okay, so for the metal, you've seen me use this in other tutorials. If you just go to RGB IOR here, and of course I'm pulling these values uh, for iron off of. Uh, refractive index. Okay, that is the values for iron. Sorry for not reading them out, but if you need them, there they are. Um, I will link a pretty good tutorial on uh, realistic metals in Octane below, and then uh, you'll kind of know what's going on here a bit, but I don't fancy explaining it. <laughs> um, so in the metal, first thing we're going to do, uh, you can probably predict, is a surface imperfection. Uh, if we grab an image texture here, and uh, of course, if you, if you want the, you might not want the file because you might want to make the scene yourself, but uh, even if you download the project file from my self I store, uh, of course, all these uh, assets will be in there and I will put in the tutorial file that I'm making right now and I'll put in the original file. The original file will be a bit more high quality, uh, so I would suggest uh, taking a little look at that one just because I've spent, you know, way more time on it, but I do want scratches for this. So... Uh, I don't want the black scratches, I'll stay with the white just now. Uh, what we'll do is we'll be careful here, we might have to offset these in the cloner. Thankfully Chris modelled this in quite a functional way for uh, Cinema 4D users. The model's still tangible, it's not editable at all, uh, so you can still kind of fuck about with all the cloners and stuff, which is really cool. Uh, but if we just load this into the roughness, make it uh, a gamma of about 8, we'll then two of those just in case we need them and then a gradient as well and then clamp this all the way down uh, and then what I'm actually going to do is change this value to kind of a light grey uh, just so it doesn't go too deep uh, and then I kind of only, only really done about that much with it uh, and then what I did is a mixed material and then a octane material and then load them kind of in reverse like that and then in the octane material, we'll call this dirt because we're going to feed it through dirt map. Uh, but we actually want kind of a glossy uh, black. Don't forget to change this to GGX as well. It just looks way nicer. It's just my opinion. Now we have to go into the saver here and we have to start sussing out all the things that need this material. I know this one snuck up on me down there, yeah. Um, that one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and that looks okay. And then if you come back into the mixed material here, just to set up that dirt material, if you plug that into both the channels there, then it went not deep, deep black. But then roughness, kind of all the way up, specular a little bit down. 
kind of gives like a plasticky look and then just plug that back into material slot two and then we want to get an image texture we mix and this image texture and if we get dirt here plug that into the amount into the texture first of all i'm going to plug it into the amount there and i'm going to make this bright red and then we're going to be able to see what we're doing here uh, Swap them. Uh, move the details up and then mess with the radius. Uh, you just kind of want to mess with the values so you've got something like that just kind of poking out in the inside. Uh, and then what you can do is just plug that in there. And then if we grab a gradient. Now the reason he's right is just so we can see exactly what's going on. Drags and transform this time. We do want to go in box. Bring that all the way down on the gamma. And then just kind of mess these values about uh, till that's kind of broken up around a bit like that. Now it is nice to get out of the camera here and uh, see what's going on. Uh, one thing I'm noticing is these are just far, the, the, the scratches themselves are far too big, so you can just bring that all the way down like that. Now they're tiling, so I'm just going to switch back to mesh and bring them down. That looks okay. And then we can just put that back into a deep black. Uh, and now there's kind of black scratches countering the, uh, the white ones as well as kind of a black edge uh, on the dirt. Now, if you mess with this more, you can use the gradient to break up the dirt properly. But I'm not going to spend too much time going over that really. Uh, I think a cool thing can be to invert the normals, but because they're not details, it just kind of follows it a bit too strongly. So if we jump back into our main camera here, the texture is looking pretty similar to how I had it. I did spend a bit more time in it and I refined it much more. For the gold, is of course on index, uh, refractive index, uh, put in gold values for it, uh, and there wasn't much difference there uh, in terms of that. If you put up the fall off map to just point one you're gonna get a much more intense light and i think i did have that in the original scene uh just to kind of get uh, that reflection coming off of here um but if i just release this to the 65 and, uh, there that's kind of the way it was before uh, i can't really think of how else to mess with it one thing I just I did this earlier and it looked so cool. Is a red saber just looked so nice? Oh, it looks awesome! Uh, so definitely go crazy with that. Um, be sure to send me your renders, by the way. I had a couple of emails with some of the renders and they're awesome, so uh, keep sending them. Uh, I've, I'm gonna try and keep this tutorial a bit shorter, I can't promise it's gonna be shorter, but uh, I just want to kind of get to the point a bit more, try and nail it, try and whiz through it. Um, that is creating a lightsaber in Cinema 4D and Octane. I hope there's a lot of Star Wars fans that watch these tutorials, I really do. Just to go over some updates, if you're enjoying these tutorials, I'm going to keep posting them every Friday. I have a slight idea of trying to post one every day through December, uh, advent calendar of tutorials. I'm not sure yet, depends if I get the ideas for it or not. <laughs> uh, I thought of this idea about a month ago, uh, it just takes getting around to actually executing it. I'm going to try and hold your hand less, I guess, in these tutorials because I think it's good to innovate. But this project file will be on Selfie for free. The original one will be up there for free. If you want the noise terrains, they will be up there on Selfie from two tutorials ago. And I will link the model and I will link that metal tutorial. And then you can create some absolutely fucking awesome renders. Uh, so thanks for watching this tutorial. I'm recording this very late because I procrastinate. But without further ado, I will see you next Friday for an idea I haven't came up with yet. <laughs> Bye.